This is the Puma DV8 Nitro. And it was at the forefront of Puma's re-entry into the running market last year. But does Big Cat Energy have staying power? It's time to talk about the DV8 Nitro after 100 miles. Fourteen point seven zero miles and eight minutes twenty one seconds per mile on average, with two of those miles being at a moderate pace, and the rest of the miles easy. A fitting way to get the Puma DV8 Nitro to the one hundred mile mark. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe after a hundred miles, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I bought myself. No one sent it to me. No one's paying me to make this video, and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Puma DVA Nitro after 100 miles. First, let's go over some specs. This is a 32 millimeter stack height shoe with an eight millimeter drop, giving us 24 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. In this forefoot, we've got a couple of things here. The main story for me is the nitro foam, which Puma introduced last year. It is a fantastic nitro foam. I generally like all nitro foams, and I really like the way that Puma is using nitro in their foams here. It is a nice springy compound, absorbs lots of impact, but it has a high resiliency, so it kind of like recoils back in a really snappy kind of way. Also in the back, because that foam is a little bit squishy, uh, there is a heel clip that's back here that's going to help from it getting too unstable as the foot hits the ground. And there's also a carbon fiber plate in here, which you can see, which Puma is calling an inno plate. Also on this outsole, we've got Puma grip and there is a large amount of rubber on this outsole. Moving to the upper, we've got a comfortable and relatively breathable material in the forefoot. In the tongue, we've got my favorite kind of tongue. It just looks like a soccer cleat with the lace covers cut off. It's cut really low and stays out of the way and is very thin, not a lot of padding at all. There's also not a lot of padding as you get to the heel cup back here. Instead, what we have is a pretty floppy heel cup. There's not a lot of structure except for like this one reinforced area that's going up kind of the center back of the heel but for the rest part it's floppy and there is a couple of bumper pads that are designed to sit kind of on top of like the bulb of the ankle in order to help keep it in place. Altogether, this is a very tall stack height shoe with a lightweight foam, but there is a lot of that foam so it comes in at a weight of 9.1 ounces and 257 grams. So what was it like to run in this shoe? I would say even though it has a carbon fiber plate in it, it didn't feel like a race shoe or even like a companion training shoe that you might take out in your workouts. Instead, what I feel like this shoe is giving me is kind of like that uh, faster max cushion shoe, very much like the 1080 or the Triumph 19. Uh, I feel like this shoe gives a lot of stack height, but it also still wants to be a shoe that you could take for a lot of your easy runs, but also some Runs that might have some faster paces in it. So that's why I wanted to make sure that today I did have two marathon miles in it, which wasn't a ton of marathon miles, but I've also taken this shoe on other runs in different marathon builds where I've taken it on like an 18 mile run with 10 of those miles being at marathon effort. So I've had it up at that moderate pace for quite a bit of time in my testing of the shoe. And I think for those pace ranges from easy to moderate or to your marathon pace, I think the shoe does a fantastic job. I think that the nitro foam is a very soft material at slow speeds. It firms up once you're getting into the easy speeds. Uh, and then once you're picking up the pace a little bit past easy, that's when it starts to kind of loosen and relax a little bit more again. And I think that's kind of generally what I see in a lot of nitro foams. So it ends up being a shoe that I've been really enjoying for my easy paces and everything all the way up to about marathon pace. But I think that once you're getting a little bit faster than marathon pace, that's where I feel like a lot of the weight starts to become a bit of a factor. And then some of that comfort in the upper that I really enjoyed kind of 
in that step in comfort and at easy paces then starts to become a little bit of a negative as I start to pick up the pace a little bit faster than that. So one of the things that I've noticed is that the heel is a little bit loose. And while it does have some bumper pads back here, I think that at least for me, the heel is just a little bit on the big size. It wasn't a problem for me, at least not for the paces that I wanted to run in at the shoe. And it never got to the point where I felt like I had to use a runner's knot to get a more of a lockdown in the heel. But I think it is something that is going to be a little bit more noticeable for some of you that are out there, especially if you've had problem in the heels of shoes in the past. But overall though, that's not a huge issue for me. And I think that for a lot of you, it's still not going to be a huge issue as well. Now let's talk about what the wear and tear has been like on the shoe after a hundred miles. Now hundred miles isn't the full lifespan of the shoe. That's just for me, the normal point where I like to do my longer term review on the shoes that I like after just the first couple of runs. And what I can say about this shoe is that the foam feels pretty much like it did straight out of the box. I feel like nitro foams are extremely durable. They last a very long time and they don't compress over time. It takes a really long time, I think, for a nitro foam shoe to really lose some of the resiliency that the foam provides. Uh, moving to the outsole, I feel like the outsole has hardly any visible wear at all. Even in my usual spaces, which is on the side of the heel and underneath the pads of the feet, I'm seeing very little wear in the heel. I'm seeing almost no wear and I have to look extremely close at the pads of the feet to see anywhere. And even then it's extremely faint. And the only way that I can tell there's anywhere at all is because there's these kind of like, oh, not micro, but very small etchings on the faces of these diamonds over here. And on some of the pads, it's a little bit more worn than others, but it's something that is extremely minuscule. It's really hard to see and it hasn't affected the grip at all. Even on this day, there were some icy spots out there on the lakefront path. And while I'm not saying that this is an ice running shoe by any means, I feel like the Puma grip definitely does a good job. I'm not sure it's worth some of the weight overall in the package of this shoe coming in at 9.1 ounces. Not that 9.1 ounces is extremely heavy, but if this is going to be a shoe that's anything but like an easy day or a long run shoe, if this is going to become a workout shoe, I do think that it might need to shed a little bit of weight. And so that's something that I wouldn't mind seeing changing going forward, especially given that I know now that this Puma grip is certainly legit and can handle a lot of wear and tear. I feel like given the durability and given the grip, I think we could do a lot more with less of the rubber on the outsole. So that's something that I hope to see changing for 2022 in the second version of the shoe. But as it is now, I feel like the shoe ultimately is holding up really well. The upper is also holding up well. The only thing is I've got this really bright color and it is discoloring a little bit, but that's a purely cosmetic thing in terms of the overall function of the shoe. Everything is working really well. And I hope that I can use this as kind of the metaphor or the harbinger of what's to come from Puma as it reinvents itself in the running space. Last year, Puma came in with a lot of fanfare and a lot of hype uh, reintroducing itself to the running community. It came in with an entire line of all brand new shoes, all brand new foam, and all the shoes from Puma that I ran in last year, I really enjoyed and I was very impressed. But it also had me concerned as, all right, they came in really hot on this first year. What is year two, three, and four going to look like? I think that if the DV8 Nitro and how it's been holding up is any indication, and if any of the signings that we've recently heard about in terms of the athletes that Puma is going after and trying to sign and sponsor to prove that they are dedicated to this space and the runners that are here, uh, I think that this all bodes really well for Puma. And I'm hoping that not only did they have a good 2021, I'm hoping that they have an equally good 2021. 22. If you have any questions about the Puma DV8 Nitro, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I have a separate channel for that to keep the regular videos separate from the live streams. I'll post a link to that live stream channel down below so that way you can find it and feel free to ask me anything you want. It doesn't even have to be about running shoes. It's a place where people come and hang out. Sometimes we talk about running. A lot of times we don't as well. It's just a really great fun 
place for me to be able to interact with you guys in a real time kind of basis. And before I go, the last thing I want to talk about today is the charity runner of the week. This week's charity runner of the week is Kurt Owens. He's going to be running the Chicago Marathon in honor of his older brother, and he's going to be raising money for the Alzheimer's Association. I've donated $100 of my money to help support Kurt and his cause, and I hope you would consider donating even just a dollar or two to help Kurt reach his fundraising goals. My hope with the Charity Runner of the Week program is to be able to support you guys raising money in the communities where you live so that we can show the world how much runners can do when we run together as a pack. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?